In this tutorial I'm going to attempt to explain the histogram. You know, that graph-like thing that lives up in the navigation palette that nobody really understands. Well actually, it's a very useful tool. So we're going to start off with this image here, which as you can see has absolutely nothing on it at all. It's just white. And now you might expect the histogram not to show anything, but you'd be wrong. Here we go with the histogram. and. At first glance, yes, it does look like it's not showing anything. Let's just expand that. But this image is filled with a value, and the value is white. And it's marked on this graph with a line here at this end, which is the end that indicates white. The histogram runs from 0, which indicates black, to 255, which indicates white. And as this image is entirely white, the only um, data that's recorded on this graph is the a line at the white end. And to prove that, if I invert this image and turn it black, you see now this, it, this line has disappeared and it's put one in here at the zero end. We might be able to see this better if I use the histogram on the level slider. There, yeah, slightly larger. Now we've got little markers to show you this is the white end and the value is 255 and this is the black end and the value is 0. So what does this 255 and 0 mean? Well this is an 8-bit image which means there are 8 bits of data um, and the bit is a binary measurement and when I say 8 bits of data it's 8 bits of data per channel. So yes, a bit is a binary measurement, so it's 2 to the power of 8. So 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and so on. And so by, t by the time you get to 2 to the power of 8, you've got 256. And you say, oh, there's only 255 here. But the reason for that is you're not counting the 0. So it's 255 plus a 0 is 256. And this graph is 256 pixels wide. So each time a colour is represented on here, it has a one pixel wide spike um, shown on the graph, which is why this is actually quite small. But here you go, there's one pixel wide spike showing the zero value. And before we had a one pixel wide spike showing the white value. OK, so there's 256 bits of data per channel sorry, 256 values per channel um, in an 8-bit image. So what about a 16-bit image? I'll just get rid of this and we'll change this to 16-bit mode. Well now we've got 2 to the power of 16 which actually gives us about 65,000 um, different pieces of data uh, per channel which is a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot more than 255 or 256. In actual fact, there's only 15 bits of data because one of the bits of data is used for something else. So that only gives us, she says only, 32,000 different um, colours that are represented per channel. So what happens then if we look on our levels graph? Absolutely nothing. Photoshop is still showing white as 255, <clears throat> not as 32,000, as it should be. And the reason for this is Photoshop wanted to keep it simple, didn't want to confuse people. They want people to be solid in their understanding that white is 255 and black is zero, and all the other colours are somewhere in between. So the level slider still shows it as if it was an 8-bit image. But it's not, it's now 16 bit. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll revert this back to 8 bit per channel. Now, why is it important to say 8 bit per channel and not an 8 bit image? Well, that's because this is an RGB image, so although it's only got black on it at the moment, it actually shows the other colour channels as well. So there's 256 bits of date, 256 values in the grayscale, which is what we've got shown at the moment, but there's also 256 um, values in the red channel, 
the green channel and the blue channel. So actually this is a 24 bit image. So there's thousands and thousands of different colour values, 16 million colour values um, in this one image. Okay, so let's turn this back to white. There we go. And let's see what happens when we put a colour on it. Okay, let's just change this back to RGB. Right, and now let's paint across it. There you go, nice bit of green. <clears throat> Now you might have expected just one more peak in this graph, but we've actually got three. And the reason we've got three is because this green is made up of three different colours. It's not just green. And to show that, it's got a red value, a green value as you would expect, and a blue value. And we can look at that further by clicking on the colour picker here, and we'll see the values for RGB here. The red value is 142. If we go back, cancel that a minute. Okay. The red value is 142, so that would be this one here, the middle one. The blue value is 135, which will be this first one here, because remember this is 0 to 255, and the green one is 203. So there. The red one was that one. The blue one was the one nearest the send, and the green one, the one nearest that end. And if we add another colour, a bit of orange. Now you see there's not so much orange, so the spike doesn't go quite to the top. This is in the green value, it's got a value of probably about ooh, 160 or so. Let's have a look at this. A bit difficult to say. Green 147 is the green value. It's got a red value of 247, so it's going to be quite the way up here. And a blue value of 82, so it's going to be well down here. Let's look at that. RGB, there you go, the red value and the blue value. And we can even see them in their various colours here, to make it a bit more clear. OK, so now you can understand the histogram a bit more. But this is not like a normal histogram. If you had a clip art, a clip art image here, which was just full of these blank colours, then this is what the histogram would look like, lots of separated lines. But for a normal image, you've got a more graduated um, band of colouring. So if we just open up a more normal image, let's have a look. There we go. OK. Let's refresh that. So now you can see a histogram that's a nice smooth curve and solid all the way across, virtually from 0 to 255. But looking at this, this histogram would appear to be telling us that we've got some clipping in the shadows here. The black values are going off, off the graph. So let's just zoom in for this a bit. Okay. And it's probably these areas here. So if we get the colour pick at all and the info palette, let's just click on these. And as you can see, as I move this colour pick at all over this area, you can see the RGB values changing. And where it does seem to be saying that the green and the blue values are at uh, their darkest, yeah, the green is zero there, blue is two, and we'll probably find that blue goes down to zero at some point as well. Um, the red values, as you can see, are, are still in the positive here. So this can't actually be black. OK, so why is our histogram showing that we've got black here? Well, let's have a look at the channels. If we click on red, now we can clearly see we have no black values in the red. The red doesn't fade to its darkest. But if we click on the other channels, green, the green certainly does. And the blue certainly does. So what this is actually saying is that this colour isn't black. It's a very dark brown or dark red, if you wish. And so there's no clipping going on here. OK, let me just put that back. Do that a bit. Right, 
So that gives you a reasonable idea of how the histogram works. So in future, when I talk about the histogram in my tutorials, let's hope you'll have a better understanding of it than you did before. For more tips and tutorials on using Photoshop, why not visit my website at www.sally-jane.co.uk